Happy Wednesday, you guys! Even though we're asynchronous today, I could not let you go. I just had to be here at least somewhat in spirit. Anyways, it is December 2nd, 2020. And our objective for today is to read the text in order to be able to analyze what the set and stage directions reveal about context. So remember yesterday we were talking about the historical context, what was happening in the time period that this play was written, and what they reveal about the characters. So the people in the story. Then you guys are going to record a video of yourself performing a selected line in order to apply your understanding of the characters and setting. It's gonna be fun and I'm excited for this new format. So what I need you guys to do for me is make sure that you have your Google Slides open, that they are ready to be edited, because we're going to go ahead and we're going to start editing those now. I'm waiting on you to go ahead and open your, your Google Slideshow. Come on, open your Slideshow. I'm waiting. All right, let's do this. So, what we're gonna do first is we're going to read the stage directions that set the opening scene. We're at act one, scene one. And these are the stage directions that happen before any lines. We're going to read them and then determine what the highlighted text tells us about the home, all right? So I'm going to read it. I want you to follow along with me. The younger living room would be a comfortable and well-ordered room if it were not for a number of indestructible contradictions to this state of being. Its furnishings are typical and undistinguished, and their primary feature now is that they have clearly had to accommodate the living of too many people for too many years and they are tired. Still, we can see that at some time, a time probably no longer remembered by the family, except perhaps for mama, the furnishings of this room were actually selected with care and love and even hope and brought to this apartment and arranged with taste and pride. That was a long time ago. Now the once loved pattern of the couch upholstery has to fight to show itself from under acres of crocheted doilies and couch covers, which have themselves finally come to be more important than the upholstery. So our directions told us to determine what the highlighted text tells us about the home. So let's go ahead and zone in on this highlighted text right here. Now the once loved pattern of the couch upholstery has to fight to show itself from under acres of crocheted doilies and couch covers which have themselves finally come to be more important than the upholstery. All right, so what could this tell us about the home? Our directions right here say to highlight the statement that best tells us what the highlighted quote shows about the room. So, okay, that's cool. We don't have to come up with anything out of nowhere. We don't have to just come up with something out of our brains. We have some options. That makes me feel better. So out of these three options, what does this highlighted quote tell us about the room? Is it that the younger's home feels crowded? 
Now the once loved pattern of the couch upholstery has to fight to show itself from under acres of crocheted doilies and couch covers, which have themselves finally come to be more important than the upholstery. Hmm. Maybe it's crowded with furniture, but not quite any people as far as I can tell right now. Number two, that the younger's home feels tired. All right, let me reread this highlighted quote again. Now the once loved pattern of the couch upholstery has to fight to show itself from under acres of crocheted doilies and couch covers, which have themselves finally come to be more important than the upholstery. Feels tired. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with tiredness or weariness necessarily, but what about this third statement? The younger's home at one time showed some hope and pride. Now the once loved pattern of the couch upholstery. Okay, so we have a word, the once loved, that kind of reminds me of this phrase right here, at one time. So something that happened in the past, okay, that's something's fitting here. Showed some hope and pride. It was loved. The couch upholstery has to fight to show itself from under acres of crocheted doilies and the couch covers, which have themselves finally come to be more important than the upholstery. All right, so the covers have become more important than the whole upholstery. Upholstery is, if you guys are unfamiliar with that term, it's the original fabric that a chair or a couch uh, has covering it. So what it's saying is that this upholstery used to be very important part of this couch. And it also used to be a once loved pattern. That seems to make a lot of sense with this third statement right here, that the younger's home at one time showed some hope and pride. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this statement for us. Awesome, I've completed this slide. Let's move on to the next one. We're gonna keep reading the stage directions before the lines. And here, a table or a chair has been moved to disguise the worn places in the carpet, but the carpet has fought back by showing its weariness with the pressing uniformity elsewhere on its surface. Weariness has, in fact, won in this room. Everything has been polished, washed, sat on, used, scrubbed too often, all pretenses but living itself have long since vanished from the very atmosphere of this room. So we're doing the same thing here that we did on the last slide. We're going to highlight the statement that best tells us what the highlighted quote shows about the room. So we're going to read the quote again, and then you're gonna highlight out of these three, well, actually now out of these two, because remember, we just highlighted the third one for the first slide, so now there's only two to choose from. Go ahead and pause this video and choose that statement. All right, now that you've unpaused the video and you're ready to move on, we're going to take a look at the next slide. There's more stage directions for us to read. We're still setting the scene before we really dive into it. So let's keep reading. Moreover, a section of this room, for it is not really a room unto itself, though the landlord's lease would make it seem so, 
slopes backwards to provide a small kitchen area where the family prepares the meals that are eaten in the living room proper, which must also serve as a dining room. The single window that has been provided for these two rooms is located in this kitchen area. The sole natural light the family may enjoy in the course of a day is only that which fights its way through this little window. At left, a door leads to a bedroom which is shared by Mama and her daughter, Benitha. At right opposite is a second room which in the beginning of the life of this apartment was probably a breakfast room, which serves as a bedroom for Walter and his wife, Ruth. That concludes the stage directions before we finally dive into the first line of the play. But I want us to do the same activity that we've been doing with the past two slides and finally highlight that last statement that best tells us what the highlighted quote shows about the room. So is it quote one, I mean statement one or statement two that you guys are going to choose? Go ahead and pause this video again and highlight that statement. Now that you've unpaused the video and you're ready to keep on moving through today's lesson, we're going to take a breather. Go ahead and sit back and relax and watch up until minute 1220 of this first part of Act 1, Scene 1 of A Raisin in the Sun. Then I want you to answer the question in the blue text box, which that question is, does the setting of this scene match the way the room was described in the stage directions? So we just did the first three slides of this slideshow reading the stage directions, figuring out what they reveal about the um, home. I want you to tell me if this movie clip does a good job of following those stage directions, okay? So go ahead and pause this video and join me again once you finish this clip. So I see that you've unpaused and you're back. I hope you enjoyed that first bit of A Raisin in the Sun. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to analyze a couple of lines from that first scene that you watched. So we're not analyzing all of the lines or all of the stage directions um, from that first scene, just a couple of them to give you the idea of what we're looking for. But when we come to class tomorrow, we're going to go ahead and talk about that entire scene and what all went down. So stage directions are an important feature of how plays are structured. Think about what the introductory stage directions help you understand about the characters and the situation. I want you to think about what they reveal about each character and their relationships. I've done you guys a favor here and I've color coded the stage directions to each question that is being asked. So it's very easy for you guys to go ahead and go in and find what uh, stage directions refer to what question. But I'm gonna go ahead and read this for you and then model for you how we're gonna complete this. Ruth. So Ruth is the character who is saying these lines. Come on now, boy, it's 7.30. Her son sits up at last in a stupor of sleepiness. I say, hurry up, Travis. You ain't the only person in the world got to use the bathroom. The child, a sturdy, handsome little boy of 10 or 11, drags himself out of the bed and almost blindly takes his towels and today's clothes from drawers and a closet and goes out to the bathroom, which is in an outside hall and which is shared by another family or families on the same floor. Ruth crosses to the bedroom door at right and opens it and calls in to her husband. Walter Lee, it's after 7.30. Let me see you do some waking up in there now. She waits. 
You better get up from there, man. It's after 7.30, I tell you. She waits again. All right, you just go ahead and lay there, and next thing you know, Travis be finished, and Mr. Johnson will be in there, and you'll be fussing and cussing around here like a madman. And be late, too. She waits at the end of patience. Walter Lee, it's time for you to get up. So, as I've said, stage directions are an important feature of how a play is structured. They give us an insight as to what the characters are supposed to do, what the actors are doing on stage, or also what they look like or what the setting looks like. So what I want you guys to do for me is to follow along as we read what the stage directions reveal about Travis, Ruth and Walter's son. Like I said, I've color coordinated the stage directions to each question so it's easy for us to go in and find the ones that coordinate. So this is a light orange color. Let me find the text that's highlighted in light orange. Ah, here we go. It's also in italics, a visual signal to let me know that these are stage directions. The child, a sturdy, handsome little boy of 10 or 11, drags himself out of bed and almost blindly takes his towels and today's clothes from drawers in a closet and goes out to the bedroom, the bathroom. Okay, so what does this reveal about Travis in one or two sentences? It kind of goes over his looks in the stage directions here. So I'm going to say this quote reveals that Travis is a child and that he is around 10 or 11 years old. Very simple. The playwright straight up tells us this information about our character. I want you to go ahead and do the next two pieces on your own. Go ahead and pause this and do that. Now that you've unpaused and you're back, we're gonna keep reading a couple of stage directions. Same format of activity that we just did, but different lines, different stage directions. He rises and finds a cigarette in her handbag on the table and crosses to the little window and looks out, smoking and deeply enjoying this first one. Ruth. Almost matter-of-factly, a complaint too automatic to deserve em emphasis. Why you always gotta smoke before you eat in the morning? Walter, at the window. Just look at him down there, running and racing to work. He turns and faces his wife and watches her a moment at the stove. And then suddenly, you look young this morning, baby. Ruth, indifferently, yeah. Walter, just for a second, stirring the megs. Just for a second, it was, you looked real young again. He reaches for her. She crosses away, then dryly. It's gone now. You look like yourself again. So same activity. I also have left these color coded. Go ahead and find the quotes that match each question and tell me what do they reveal about the character or what do they reveal about the character's relationships? Go ahead and pause this video and come back to it once you're done answering. All right, unpaused, I love it, we're back, we're ready to keep on learning, and we're gonna keep on reading a new set of stage directions. He hands the boy the coin, but his eyes are directed to his wife's. Travis takes the money happily. Travis, thanks, Daddy. He starts out. Ruth watches both of them with murder in her eyes. Walter stands and stares back at her with defiance. 
and suddenly he reaches into his pocket again on an afterthought. Walter, without even looking at his son, still staring hard at his wife. In fact, here's another 50 cents. Buy yourself some fruit today, or take a taxi cab to school, or something. Travis, whoopee! He leaps up and claps his father around the middle with his legs, and they face each other in a mutual appreciation. Slowly, Walter Lee peeks around the boy to catch the violent rays from his wife's eyes and draws his head back as if shot. So once again, you're going to tell me what the quotes tell about Walter and also what the quotes tell about Walter and Ruth's relationship. Go ahead and pause. And now that you're unpaused, you're ready to actually put into practice stage directions and the impact that they make on a performance. So what I want you guys to do for homework tonight is to choose one of the lines below to perform. You're gonna use Flipgrid in order to record yourself. So on slide 10, I have the Flipgrid links for each class. Make sure you click the Flipgrid link that coordinates to your class period. And you're going to pay attention to the stage directions and use them as your guide for your acting choices. So you have two different um, lines to choose from. You can either read as Walter or you can read as Ruth, but I'm going to model for you guys how you might want to perform this in your recording with this line from Walter right here. So our line is Walter with the stage directions wandering in still more oriented to sleep than to a new day and then saying the dialogue well what was you doing all that yelling for if I can't even get in there yet? Acting out the stage directions, stopping and thinking, then saying, check coming today. So I'm going to head it and act this out for you as an actor would if they were performing this on stage. And you're going to do the same thing with what line you decide to perform in your Flipgrid video, okay? Oh my God, oh, so tired. Oh, well, what are you doing all that yelling for? I can't even get in there yet. Is check coming today? and see. So you guys are going to be doing the same thing, very brief, very quick, but acting out what the stage directions are telling you guys to do, and then saying those lines, really creating a visual for your audience so they can feel the entire mood and really be living in that scene. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so, so much for showing up and doing your work on our very first Asynchronous Wednesday. I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys. I'm proud of you guys. Peace. Mm -hmm.